of this while I grown men every morning in a hole. They leave their squalor and dig for a dollar down deep in a rich man's hole. And you can't stay young, breathing through a black lung, living all left to your luck. Wishing for the sun with a prayer on your tongue till your time underground is up. No! Well, hello, and welcome to the special edition of the Port Sessions here in Meridian, Mississippi, where we have our special guest, Steve Wilkerson. Man, nice to see you. I appreciate you having it. In fact, you arranged all this for us, and can't thank you enough for that. So. I just I just made a phone call or two, and I'm just proud to have you all up here. This is man, uh, it's been nice. Although I don't know about all this weather, man. This is this is kind of killing me here. So it's like I've got a jacket and everything on. You're doing all right over there. So well, you know, <laughs> we're we're up a little further north than you guys. You know, we might be a <laughs> might be a little more used to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. No, not really. <laughs> you know, one of the things that always um, that, that I always like to find out when I talk to musicians is that, like, when you really think about it and you say, you know, I'm gonna play music for a living. I mean, it's kind of an odd choice in life to make. You know, some people say they want to be doctors, lawyers, and you know, and um, and so I wanted to kind of, you know, what inspired you to become a musician? Well, you know, I took piano lessons. I should say my grandmother, uh, it wasn't an inspiration, it was a dedication. <laughs> my, my grandmother was dedicated to making sure that I learned how to play piano from an early age. As soon as uh, she kept looking at my, my hands, you know, and okay, I'm spreading just, them out, I think, I think, I'm stretching them. I think, I think maybe next year, you know. So uh, when I was eight, she started taking me down here to Meridian. I lived just a few miles north of town. And uh, to Miss Annabelle Boyd, which is uh -huh. a legendary figure here in Meridian as far as, you know, piano teaching goes. Um, and she brought me down here and, and I took for a couple of years and, and learned a lot, you know, as, as she taught everybody, um, you know, theory and that sort of thing. Um, and then I got to be about 10 and decided that the sunshine and puppies and, you know, baseball and everything else was a lot more fun than sitting inside and playing piano on a Saturday morning. So um, quit and and didn't think anything else about it until I got to college and my roommate was uh, you know a guitar player and and he did rather well with the ladies with the guitar. <laughs> and so it didn't take very long of being in Starkville, Mississippi before I met him one morning. He was coming in from wherever he'd been with his guitar, and I was going out <clears throat> to my algebra class, and I met him, and I grabbed him by the, <laughs> the shirt, and I said, when I get back from college uh, from college algebra, I'm gonna wake you up. You're gonna teach me how to play that daggum guitar. <laughs> so we did, and uh, I just fell in love with it, and did a love, love the whole you know uh, music thing, where I didn't love it when I was a kid. And then I started playing. I'd go home on the weekends and I had a, a you know, big old upright piano like everybody in the South is supposed mm, right, to have. Right. You know. <clears throat> had a big old piano there. and So I started tinkering around on it and trying to pick up and remember what I had been taught you know, as a kid. And, and it lost a lot of it. So I started playing chords like you do on a guitar. Right. You know? So I was translating everything that I was learning on uh, guitar and translating that to piano. And so I think I play a little different because of that, you know, than, than a lot of piano players because I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm in that halfway world of some guitar, some piano. Uh, but uh, then at the same time, uh, about, oh, about that time, I went to see this movie called Great Balls of Fire. Oh yeah, love that movie. Jerry Lee Lewis had Dennis Quaid in it. Uh, he, he played Jerry Lee and just did a wonderful job and just loved the movie. And I came home and I told my dad, I said, I have found out how you're supposed to play piano. It was just amazing. He said, oh yeah, that boogie woogie stuff. I said, yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, well, I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay. Dad, what? <laughs> where, where'd that come from? Dad had played in, in college. Played in a, in a college band and they played all around. And, um, you know, but I had no idea. And I'd heard him play, but I had no idea he could play the Boogie Woogie stuff. Well, he sat down and started showing me how to do it. I was like, wow. He showed me how to do the, you know, the running bass line with your left hand. That's amazing. Up here, yeah. and, you know, and so uh, I just fell in love with it. Just absolutely dove off into it. And in probably two years, that's all I did was just how to do that. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's uh, kind of got me to that point, and, and, and I played in cover bands for probably 15 years or so, and 
then uh, about five or six years ago, I, I went and saw my buddy Randy Hauser, who's uh, from right over here in Lake, and has done real well this year. Yeah, yeah. Two number one hits, and uh, he's just lighting the world on fire. And uh, I went to see him and uh, in, in New Orleans, and and just got me fired up about writing because he's a tremendous writer. Yeah, he really is. Um, got me fired up by writing, and and so I started back into songwriting. I'd played around with it a little bit earlier, but um, and got serious about it because I, I really fell in love with it. And and so the last four or five years, I've done a lot of writing, um, and put all that together. And so the, the the spring of this year, I released my first record, and just you know, it, it was good to have all of that. You know, have a little package that you could you could sure. hand somebody. You know, said hey, you know, here's some of my songs. But it's, it was more about getting the uh, getting the, the fruit of four or five years of you know learning yeah, how to do this out there so I have to ask you this is there a boogie woogie song on the on the new album there's one that's close uh, the uh, a song called turn my rooster loose okay. which uh, if there was a, uh, a single off the record I think that would have to be it um, and we're gonna hear it, that right uh, yeah I'm gonna play it for you here in, in, in a little bit it's a uh, it's a song that I went down to New Orleans and I saw this guy named Super Chicken. I don't know if y'all heard of him. Oh, yeah. Uh, he makes his own guitars. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. He's yeah. from Clarksdale and he's just a fabulous blues guy. And I was coming back from New Orleans and that, that thought just popped in my head. I don't know why, you know, songwriting, you just never know why all that stuff happens or how it happens. Uh, but the, the thought popped in my head, you know, you know, turn your rooster loose. And I'm like... <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Well, and, uh, I'm so, looking forward to hearing that. <laughs> so. That's what most people say when I say that. Oh, I don't know where you're going with that, but oh, well, we can't wait oh, to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with us, and we'll be right back with uh, "Turn Your Rooster Loose." <laughs> All right, thanks, man.
blue.